This morning's assembly meeting ended abruptly with the cabinet ministers taking absence to attend another arranged meeting. The change was not taken well by the opposition, reminding the government of the day and the Speaker of the House of the importance of cabinet ministers and the Premier to be present when discussions take place to receive responses. Today, we asked Honourable Premier Toke Talangi why other arrangements happened without taking into account the assembly meeting. We hadn't planned on the meeting dragging on yesterday and we had already planned the uh, discussions with the group that are talking about the restructuring of the public service and what we need to do uh, and with, with the timetable of the prison is getting very tight uh, because we need to get it done by December, mid-December at least. And there's a fair bit of work involved in that. So we had we had organised that. I went and spoke to the Speaker in the morning and I said, look, Speaker, um, members of our um, of our group will be at the meeting and a quorum can be formed and will be formed by those people. But unfortunately, Cabinet has already pre-planned these meetings. And this is extremely important for us. If we don't do it, I'm going to be away for two weeks and therefore it's going to delay all of those things by at least a couple of weeks. So... I, we've got a very tight timetable now, and and we need to do that. Um, on the other hand, I do respect uh, the assembly, and I do believe that in fact we should attend, but unfortunately circumstances forced us to uh, to come up to the cabinet meeting to ensure that we can discuss this particular issue, and ensure that as as I've said, restructure the public service looking at how we're going to change the taxes, we're going to change the, the, the salaries of public servants and so on, look at how, how and what we do to help people in the private sector reach the same equitable level of compensation for their efforts and so on through tax changes. So it, it's, it's, it's a tough one, but I, I believe that this is extremely important for the people of New Way uh, for this occasion and therefore we had to leave the assembly unfortunately. The majority of the members today voted to postpone the assembly this morning to the 21st of November. One other issue in hot discussions today in assembly is the fact that the Honourable Premier Toke Talangi will not be on the island for the constitution celebrations. The constitution celebrations are going to be important whether I am here or not although I would have preferred to be here. Unfortunately, last year I had to uh, go to Hong Kong, to uh, Shanghai, and I think the people of China uh, who were hosting us appreciated it, and I appreciated the, uh, the invitation to attend that. It, it's just coincidental that they happen to be at the same time. If they were at any other time, then this, this, my attendance of the Constitution celebrations would not be a factor. Um, but it is this year, and I'd like to, to say to people, look, I apologise, and I will have a message for them before I leave. A message from the Honourable Premier Talangi for the 37th Constitution celebrations will be broadcasted out to you next week. Niue is to have its pesticide-contaminated soil removed as part of a project on improved regional pesticides management between the Food and Agriculture Organization and the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program. This was announced by Dr. Kevin Halps, a senior officer with FAO, at a side event during the 22nd SPRIP meeting in Apia, Samoa. This activity is part of a larger project which focuses on many different aspects of Pacific pesticide management that is a partnership between the SPC, FAO and SPREP. According to Dr. Halps of FAO, these contaminated sites in the Pacific need to be excavated, cleaned up and dealt with. Dealing with pesticide management in the Pacific is an important environmental issue, said Dr. David Haynes, SPREP's Pollution and Waste Management Advisor. Better management will help protect the Pacific's terrestrial and marine environments into the future. There will also be assessments of contaminated sites in Samoa, Fiji and Tonga as part of this regional project. These assessments will 
allow Dr. Helps and his team to evaluate the sites to prioritize their remediation. The removal of contaminated soil in Niue will provide a demonstration on how this will be carried out in other countries in the region. Director of Environment Sauni Tangatole told the meeting there were some concerns as to the contamination of the local water lens and Niue decided to approach UNEP and FAO to see if there would be assistance provided in trying to remediate some of these sites. Slush funds, corruption, money, justice, unfair play all sounds like a business deal gone wrong but these are the discussions in yesterday morning's new legislative assembly of the proposed changes to philatelic and numismatic from a company to a corporation and amendments to the act established in 1996. The submission table took over much of the morning's meetings as members of parliament debate the pros and cons of the amendments to the already established act governing philatelic and numismatic. Most of the concerns from the opposition is the ability of the board to manage and disperse funds. They call on the board which is headed by the leader of the country, Honorable Tokita Lungi, to be transparent and accountable. It's more to do with the reporting mechanisms which are quite onerous for companies. So it still doesn't mean to say that we're not accountable in the, in the normal manner. It's just that the reporting requirements are not as onerous as, as you would if you were running a, a proper, properly established company. We've been trying, as you know, to, to, to um, establish the, uh, the company in a more commercial manner. And, uh, and, and the initial part of that was to try to earn some money through contracts we've had and we've been successful with that. And the second part is now just trying to, to manage our affairs to the point that, in fact, it's a lot easier for us to do the reporting and so on. We have been reporting, but I'd like to improve on that. And, and the, yesterday's discussion was more on people fussing over what, what money to spend where, um, when, in fact, it's a very small portion of, of what we do as, as a corporation. We spend more of our time trying to figure out how to make more money for our shareholder, which is the government and people of Niue. Prior to the letter, a recommendation to establish a representative from civil society as a board member also ended in a vote but was defeated, 11 not agreeable. As it stands, Philatelic and the Numismatic Company is now a corporation. Sustainability is the key as UNESCO pushes for education for sustainable development with training held on the island this week. The two-day workshop was officially opened yesterday with over 20 participants from different sectors of the public and private sectors as well as civil society. Sustainable development is not a new concept as this can be seen to some extent on the island. Dr. Susan Weiss, the ESD focal point within the UNESCO office says the education for sustainable development is a holistic approach towards long-term balance to improve everyone's future. The concept of sustainable development is about living within our means, living in a way that preserves the environment, looks after the community, makes sure that people have enough money to put on the table, but not just now, for right into the future. So it's, it's making sure that we look after the people now, but we're also leaving behind a legacy so that people in the future can also live you know, such productive and healthy, happy lives. The reason for focusing on there for education for sustainable development is that the, the message about sustainable development is not getting through. So the idea is that we need to increase the emphasis on education, awareness, training, to actually look at ways that we can actually get the message through and get people to modify the way that they live, get them to reduce waste, to get them to protect water resources, get them to uh, live sustainably, look after their health, because these are the kind of issues that are facing the region, like climate change, like non-communicable diseases. How do we actually get people to take on that personal responsibility that will actually make sure that they do live those lives and they pass on that, that inheritance to their children? So the workshop is discussing that and then looking at ways that we could adopt this concept in new way. What, what could we do to get these messages better through here 
to improve everybody's futures. What are the partnerships we can build? What are the ways that we can strengthen and reinforce these things? Because they're also interconnected. Water is connected to health and health is connected to happiness and productivity and your ability to earn a living. So isolating them the way we, we often do, particularly because Western concepts of management come in, um, hopefully we can break that down a little bit. And uh, because you've got a small resource base, particularly in terms of human resources, it's really important to, to work together to have enough people to, to make the change. The idea of the workshop is we agree what New Way wants to do and then we'll explore ways of making it happen. So um, we're looking at uh, the initiatives that we're looking at are all integrated across multiple groups. So there's quite a few discussions that need to be held with different agencies that support different areas, but uh, we'll be trying to put together a proposal. We'll probably break it down into different stages. We also don't want to make something too big and too difficult to get moving. We want to start off with some practical steps and um, the, the UNESCO National Commission and UNESCO will be able to fund some small activities and hopefully by bringing in the partnerships we'll also be able to extend the resources that are available to, to build this up over time. So start off with a small concept, get some successes and, and build it and take it then into other spheres. Susan says that two particular areas that seemed to stand out in discussions for those attending was the need for a change in behaviours to increase health-seeking behaviour as well as the need for strengthening culture in the schools that subjects taught are done in the new context with the promotion of Vangho Niwe. The workshop concluded today with the hope that there will be some positive proactive actions yet to come. Decreasing the damage caused by natural hazards was the message that came across as Niue observed the International Day for Disaster Reduction today. A special program was held at the Commercial Centre this morning. The objective of the day was to raise awareness amongst communities to take actions to reduce the risk of disasters. Disaster Council Chairman Mark Chenery highlighted the dangers of complacency. Quite simply, one of the fundamental tasks in risk reduction and disaster reduction is that uh, there is always a danger of complacency among governments and people. Um, the disaster will not strike here. I think the people of Niue, uh, of course, know that this is not the case. In the last seven years since Cyclone hit a, hit a strike, Niue has made significant pro progress in disaster reduction strategies. Now, there are several government departments that are significantly involved in disaster reduction measures. These include Niue Met, the Environment Department, Public Works, Telecom, Health, DAF and the Police. I think we are now better prepared than ever, but of course true preparedness cannot be tested unless disaster strikes. Events such as today's serve to remind us not to be complacent, as perhaps the effects of HETA fade from the memories of our youth that experienced its terrifying power over the next 15 to 20 years. Shots fired. As we approach the start of what will be my last cyclone season on Niue, I would urge everyone to prepare now. Simple measures like making sure last year's emergency kit is still current, that batteries are fresh, that bottled water is fresh, and that your home is secure and property is cleared of old trees and potential hazards go a long way to preparing for this year's cyclone season. Vulnerability to disasters growing faster than resilience and disaster risk reduction should be an everyday concern for everybody. This was also reflected in this year's theme. The theme for this year I think is very, very appropriate, focusing on children and the youth, for they are not only the leaders of tomorrow, but it is very, very important and essential for them to take on board and be aware of the importance of uh, preparation and also to know about disaster, what is involved in disaster and also what needs to be done before, during and after the disaster. And I think the message that I said before, prepare and don't be complacent. We have children today that uh, we know that they can read the map when the radio announces the track of the cyclone, 
the children will go to the map, the cyclone tracking map, and they will point out where the cyclone is. I think that is a good lesson. Um, we ought to teach our children on what numbers to ring before or during a disaster. Uh, these are educational matters that we need to take on board and work with the schools in order for the children to know which numbers to ring and which departments, and it will help them at home. If there is a disaster at home and they don't know anything else to do but to ring an appropriate number. And I think these are the educational things we need to work with the, with the children. With the youth, the youth has got, got a lot to contribute to how the youth is built. Because if you say youth are leaders of tomorrow, if we do not educate and teach and work with our youth to be involve them in the programs we do, then we will be handicapped where youth are concerned. Youth themselves must be proactive to search, to look for better things to do with their lives. Other than the entertainment side, the social side of things, I think it is important for the youth to be engaged also with the village councils. Youth and school children were part of the celebrations held today, reciting poems, singing songs and participating in quiz questions to gauge their awareness of disasters. As we hear of reports from communities nearby and internationally, disasters are all around us and many lives have been affected by these types of disasters. Disasters, natural disasters internationally for 2011. Triple disaster in Japan, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, and the accident at the Fukushima nuclear reactor. Secondly, the heavy monsoon in Pakistan. Thirdly, the floods in Australia and Pakistan. Fourth, Earthquake in New Zealand, hurricanes in the Caribbean, a devastating drought affecting 13.3 million people in the Horn of Africa. And not forgetting our small island in Niue and those lives that were lost in the previous cyclones, the latest one, Cyclone Heta. Disaster risk reduction aims to decrease the damage caused by natural hazards through an ethic of prevention and preparedness. Abasele held an open fishing competition last Saturday as a lead up to their annual village show day. Despite the choppy conditions out on the water, that didn't stop those eager to get out of the house from testing out their skills with the best catch of the day for the canoe fishermen with the most yellow fin that went to the village member of parliament Billy Talangi. Pulepule Hopokingi had the heaviest fish and for the boat category that was taken out by Brendan Pasisi. As for the reef fishing category, there were lots of different coloured fish caught from Matanginifale's home village. Overall, it was fu a fun event for the family, especially with the kids as they embark on what was the beginning of the school holidays. So don't forget to set aside this coming Saturday and head out to Avasele village as they prepare to welcome you with a display of true Avasele hospitality. And that is a conclusion of our news bulletin here for BCN for this evening. We do hope that you have an enjoyable weekend and head out to Avasele for a bit of fun.